that I started like seven years ago. I think when I was 18, I did the first one. I did my first stories then, and then I was like, well, if somebody asks me, what do you do in life or what you do, then I tell them, well, I do comics, but then you can't show them. It was just kind of practical, you know, to have a little magazine to show people. So if somebody asks, you can, I always carried them in the pocket. I was like, <laughs> if anybody even asked like a slight question direction, I was like pulling them out and showing everybody. If you're starting at 18, nobody knows you. Like there's maybe like one or two comic magazines, but they don't just publish you at the start. I had to wait for like six years <laughs> until I had one story in the magazine. So it was for me just like, well, I guess I have to make my own, you know. And in the beginning I did one every month because I was fast, so the drawings were much simpler in the beginning. And then I slowed down a bit over the years. Now I do one every two to three months. So the selection for the book was quite easy for me to do because, as I said, I, there was a lot of material, like 1,600 pages at the time. So I took almost everything from the last two years and put it together. After having a first book out, the way of working, I guess it changed a little bit, but not really also. I mean, of course, I like to do stories that I think would be good enough to put in the next book eventually. It's also good to just be able to do whatever, you know, just not be so focused on the next book and just do any story I like in the fanzine because if the publisher's not <laughs> don't like it, they, you know, at least I have it in the fanzine. The stories, I guess about different stuff, it's just whatever comes up. In the beginning, like in the earlier years, it was more about like my roommates at the time and then a lot of about my parents, and now it's again changed a little bit, just whatever comes up. And I guess a lot of the book could come across as being about depression. I mean, it's for sure not like happy stories, <laughs> I guess. A few years ago, somebody told me, you always draw yourself very beautiful and all the other people look totally ugly. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, that's not what I want. But I guess it's true and it was worse before. Like now, I think the other people, some of them still look very ugly, but there's also some almost normal looking ones. But a few years ago, it was really like deformed heads and like long, like penis noses and all kind of stuff. With the metaphors, like taking the feeling like literally and putting it into an image directly, you know. Like if you have two heads, maybe feeling like two sides of you, like you know, like the good good part or like the bad mood part and just like visualizing it. So instead of just the character being in a good mood and then in a bad mood, I just visualize it with like to the extreme with like two heads. Yeah, I really like to have the twist. <laughs> it's like my trick, you know, it's the, the stories most of the time start like more or less normal or like more realistic and, and then towards the end most of the time kind of gets more like absurd. Most of the time I just do what comes to my mind just in the moment and then I kind of build the story. You know, sometimes I don't even know what's gonna happen really. I just start with maybe a page or something and then I build it from there. There's actually quite a few stories with my parents in the book. The sequence with the incubator and the birth. So, of course, when my father told me this, I think you're a bit not right in the head and you must be depressed. I was like 22 at the time. And like after 22 years of life, like your parents come around the corner and say, yes, we think there's something not quite right. Didn't make me feel great, of course. <laughs> so that's how the story originated. Normally you are born and then you come in the incubator, but this time she goes first in the big incubator for adults and then goes back into the womb of the mother. Before I started drawing myself, I didn't know like any artists. And the cross-hatching yet yeah, just happened once I started working with the feather and the ink. 
the drawings became more and more detailed just naturally. I think it just happens if you draw a lot like every day and you get better as well at it. <laughs> I mean, this really happened. I never believed this, you know, when people say, yes, you just have to practice a lot and you get better. I don't do sketches or penciling. I just start right with the image. And for me, it's just because if I already do the sketch, then I already feel like, well, I did it now. I don't want to do it twice because it's very boring to me to do the same thing, like basically again. I feel like then all the fun is already out of it. If you just know exactly how everything's gonna look already, I don't feel like doing it again. So just like to be more spontaneous and see how it goes. Thank mm -hmm. you.